Hello and welcome. Thanks for popping into my channel. If you are new here, please like and subscribe for me. If you find this content helpful, smash that notification bell so that you don't miss out on the next video. Comment below with anything that you need help with or topics you'd like me to cover and check out my website, consultingninja.tech. With that out of the way, let's get into some hooks. I want to show you guys specifically, we're going to focus on the hooks.server.js. There are some client side hooks, but you'll find that what's available there is pretty minimal, mostly some error handling stuff, which is useful, but we can cover that another time. Server hooks are the ones that are pretty cool. And I don't want to go too much in, into the documentation here. I just want to show you guys a few things that are available. Handle, this runs every time the server receives a request. Uh, that includes whether it's uh, during pre-rendering. I'll point that out. And then we also have handle fetch down here, which uh, you can use handle fetch to replace a fetch that would be happening inside of a load function or an action. All right, so let's just go look at some examples, and I'll show you guys in code some cool stuff that we can do. Uh, we previously, in another video, I was showing some authentication that you can do, protecting routes, uh, using your load functions. Uh, I'm just going to get rid of this. And I'll change this to just some random stuff here. Actually, I'll make it data equal to locals. And then inside of your source directory, this is where your hooks.server.js file is going to live. So make a new file and say hooks.server.js. And what a hooks file looks like if you don't create one, the standard just looks like this. Export async function handle. And it takes an event which is the request and resolve. And then you can kind of think of this as there's three, there's three steps to this. There's the incoming request, right? And here you can set something that's called locals. You could think of this as a, a small piece of it's really a variable. It's a variable that you can set that the back end uses and it's there only for this particular request and then it's gone, it's not available. But you can pass it to your load functions and I'll show you guys how to do that. Uh, so let's just say small, or it doesn't have to be small, variable, one time use variable that back end can use. And then we have what happens as soon as this request leaves the hook the first time, and that is running through our load functions. And then, so here we do const response equals await resolve event and then return response. And so you have the incoming, the, the running of our load functions, our, you know, hitting our backend stuff, and then we have the outgoing. And at any point in here, well, I say at any point, but you have the opportunity to make adjustments or add things as the request is going to your load functions, hitting your backend. And then you also have opportunities to make adjustments uh, before the response is finally sent back to the client. So you really have two, there's three steps, but you really have two opportunities to make adjustments to things here. So let, let me show you one common thing that, that is done here is setting what I was referring to, and that's locals. So let's do data equals my data from hooks and give that a save and then inside of our plus page dot server load function uh, make sure that you add locals here so locals and then let's just console dot log locals and what you're going to see here I want to point out two things one, there's nothing console.logged in the client because that's a server load function. And then here, uh, there is our data. So we set that locals to equal uh, my data 
and then it's just a string that says my data from hooks. But you can set this to whatever you want, and you also have access to the event. Now, don't get overwhelmed, but I'm just going to show you guys what all is actually available here. So inside of the hooks, I'm just going to console.log event so that you guys can see what all we have available to work with here. <laughs> and you can see we can we have access to all the cookies and part of that is we can we can get cookies, we can set cookies, we can delete them, serialize them. Uh, here's the locals and you can see there that I've set locals. We have access to params, uh, the whole request, everything in included here, the body, the method, and then uh, another cool one is the uh, URL. Uh, we have access to all the headers. We can set additional headers here. We have access to the URL. And this one's a cool one. Uh, so one, one cool thing that you can do here. So let's say that you want to protect your backend from people who should not be making requests. Let me just show you guys something <laughs> that we can do. If people are not, if someone's trying to hack, but they're not really good at what they're doing. So let's do, let's import redirect uh, like you needed for, <laughs> like you needed for uh, protecting that route, a lowercase redirect. And then inside of here, let's do if <laughs> event dot URL dot origin. If that's not equal to whatever we think it's going to be, which in this case, it's it should be uh, this here. So it would be whatever your your origin is. And let's put that here. So if it's not equal to what it's supposed to be like your website uh, origin, then throw to <laughs> throw a redirect and permanently moved message and then you can do whatever you want. Uh, I'll just, as an example, use https colon slash slash google.com. But if you were messing with hackers, you could make this, uh, you could make this equal, you know, any sort of bad thing. I'm not saying don't do anything illegal, but if someone's trying to hack your website, they got it coming. <laughs> and you can see, um, I just changed the logic so it's actually, it's, it's, it, this is going to trigger if it's equal to, and since it's equal to, it just pushes us right off of our origin and redirects us to Google. But this could be, uh, you know, a resource that a person would not want to be redirected to. <laughs> so that's something cool. And I'll change this back to not so that we can get back to our page. But that's something cool that you can do. And you can do this logic with with anything. Um, you can access any part of the request that I was showing you and make any sort of modification that you want or redirect to another page or anything that you could possibly think of. The, the, the thing is, is that there's so much available here and so many possibilities, it would be impossible for me to cover them all. Uh, this is just one thing that you can do. Uh, so you can set locals and then make use of those inside of your load functions. You can redirect uh, based off of information. You can pull cookies. You can set headers. You can remove headers, uh, and and absolutely everything in between. Since we have access to everything that's inside of an event, which as I'm again as I'm showing you here, it's extensive. It, you have access to modify any of this stuff and make use of it anywhere in your application. So that's some cool stuff that we can do. Uh, the other thing that you can do is some people are uh, using this to protect their routes and there's issues with that and I'll link there's a reason why uh, I follow the contributor recommended way of making sure to protect your routes inside of your load functions that does require when you're having child child routes to add a plus page dot server and await parent inside all of them. And the other thing I'll point out here is don't use the layout. Uh, if you're gonna use the layout, um, just be mindful that 
you're going to run into that the same issue. So if you try to authenticate in a layout, what's going to happen is someone will come to a particular page and that, that's part of that layout authenticated. And let, let's say that their access is revoked or their cookie expires and then they move to another route inside of that same layout, well, guess what? That layout load function is not going to trigger, and now they're accessing a page that they're not supposed to be accessing. So don't, uh, don't, do, um, don't do your protected routes inside of a layout. Do them inside of your uh, plus page.server files. And if you have child pages, make sure that you're, again, using that uh, parent and then doing that await parent so that the parent function uh, runs and your route gets protected that way. Now, again, that's not ideal. And um, when you look at the GitHub issue that I'll post a link to in the description of this video, you'll see that the developers are talking about this and they're actually working on coming up with uh, a more elegant solution to authentication since it's something that we're needing to do in our applications. We need a, a better solution, and they're aware of that. So one of the reasons I love Svelte and Svelte Kit is that the development community is so eager to make this developer friendly. All right, so that is some basic stuff that we can do with hooks.server.js. I hope that you have found this video helpful. If you did, please give a thumbs up and like. If you need any more detailed information on hooks, again, since there's so much that we can do here, if there's anything that you guys think of specifically that you'd like me to show an example of, by all means, comment below with what that is, and I would be happy to do that. All right, you guys take care, and as always, have a great day.